Hello, I'm Connor Graham from Eager Amoeba. I've built another asset called Easy Screen Align and does exactly what the title suggests. It aligns things to the screen in an easy to use manner. So I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of how the script works. There are screenshots on our website and the asset store page where you can look in more depth at what options are available in the script. And I'm gonna be showing you some of the applications that you could possibly do while using this asset. So the first one is I've added a health display to Angry Bots, which is a Unity 4.5 demo that you can download from the Asset Store. So if we go into the hierarchy, this is composed of uh, two objects, the text and the plane. So Easy Screen Align has two components to it. It has a detect resize script, which looks like the following. It has the option for update frequency, and this basically means that every two seconds it's gonna check whether the screen has been resized or not, and provide this as a static variable for the Align script to use, or your own script. So looking at the align scripts, which has been put on the test text option, you can see it here. There are several options available, such as triggers, like on resize or whether cameras move, whether you want to use percentage or pixels for the spatial measurements, what camera you want to use to get the screen coordinates, the objects anchor, the screen anchor, spacing, invert align, whether you want to look at the camera, the screen normal, basically face the screen or do nothing, locking movement to axis, smoothing, by a lerp, when it's lerp by time scale, how quick it gets to move, the tolerance, which is basically a circle on the object itself that it can never move out of, particularly useful if you have a slow tolerance but still want it to appear on screen most of the time, or the renderer bounds, which has several options such as the renderer, mesh, sprite, collider, override, which the override uses these objects here, the bounds object that you want to use for renderer bounds, and this particular section is used in determining the object anchor. So at current, this is set to mesh from the bounds object of plane, which is an object within the test text. So if I go across the scene, you'll see how this works. Here we go. So the first object, which is test text, is literally just the text, and then within that, we have a plane. So for the object anchor, it's going to be using the top right of the plane seen in the inspector. If I object anchor so it's top left, it'll go to here, but as we are there. The other thing I've added is a GUI camera which will render only this and on top of the original scene. This is going to be static, but as I'll demonstrate later, this does work with 3D objects and Unity's own built-in canvas system with rect transforms. So let's uh, select our text object in the hierarchy. Yep. Bring up the inspector for it and press play on our scene. So as you can see immediately, this has moved to the top right of the screen. It's also showing a basic approximation of the health. So let's change the object anchor to the center. Oh, that's not the center. Which will take this to the center up here, and then move this to the center of the screen. And no matter where we move, because this is just being rendered on top, it will always stay there. So let's move it to top left, if we felt like it. And let's even enable a lerp just to show you what that does. So you can see there where it's lerping from point to point to point to point to point all the way around. So let's move it over here. Show you some of the look at modes. For example, we have camera, where it does look at the camera, but if the forward vector is the wrong way around, like in this one, you can use invert look at to change the look at direction. Then you can have it look at the screen, which is basically what we saw before, but this time it is aligning to face the screen. We could also even add some uh, spacing, which that's about 2% of the smallest portion of the screen that's been spaced by. So let's demonstrate trigger on resize. And of course, disable lerp here. So because this is a two second scan, it will provide a true or false based upon whether the last scan was resized or not. And it does this every couple of seconds, so let's resize. You can see it took a couple of seconds to register it there, and it doesn't immediately need a two second scan after that. It will carry on scanning until it detects no resize, and then it will go to sleep, just to improve performance and accuracy. So by now, it will have gone to sleep. Ta-da, and you can see it realign, which is Absolutely wonderful if I do say so myself. Let's move on to 3D objects now. So just to give you a quick example of some of the 3D stuff, I have two objects in this scene that will align to an orthographic camera. First, a basic sphere, and the second is a plane within a container. So if we go through the game, you can see the spheres here, and the plane is nowhere to be found because it's facing the wrong way. Let's press play, and would you look at that? 
everything's aligned pretty much perfectly. So to demonstrate this a bit further, if we move, in fact, you can see the camera down here, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to move the game camera underneath and then let's rotate the camera. Look at that. Everything moves to update. And you can see the lerp in action over here. So we've lerped that, but we've not lerped this. There are other options available uh, for this object resize, object anchor here, but the best ones at the moment, to be honest, for this sort of setup are mesh. As you can even set it's a render, it does use the renderer bounce, but this doesn't work as well with a moving camera, and neither does Collider. Sprite doesn't even exist. That was renderer. Let's go back to the mesh. So you look at that, that, that works perfectly well. I'm very happy with that. If we go to our sphere, you can see the same result. All these are available, but they don't really do much. The mesh is your best for this kind of setup. Now just quickly, before we move on to sprites, I thought I should show you how it works with a perspective camera as opposed to an orthographic one. It's a tiny bit less precise, but it still gets the job done. So we've got this sphere here, and we've got our align plane behind it. If we press play, perfect. You can see everything aligns as you would expect. Now if we just rotate our main camera, see it all sticks to it. Now the imprecision I was talking about is in relation to the sphere. In order to get this to align properly we've had to put a bit of spacing on it because under mesh, as it's detecting the mesh, it renders slightly over to the left because it's a perspective camera. The mesh itself will look different here than it would on an orthographic one. So to get around that you can use the renderer bounds which is a tiny bit more imprecise but it will get you the results you need. So let's move on to sprites. So for this scene, as you can see, I've just got a simple sprite object here, which has been set to align its top right corner with the center of the screen. So let's uh, go to our game view down here and press play. Everything's working pretty much as expected. So let's actually move that to the top right hand corner it's a very nice corner. And then click on our GUI camera and rotate this around. You can see that maintains the rotation it has at the moment. But let's, for example, set it to screen and invert the direction. As this renderer mode has been set to sprites, it's going to behave correctly for this, which is very nice. I mean, we could change that to renderer, and it won't make much difference. Mesh doesn't exist, so we get a small error down here. Same with Collider, but we want to go back to Sprite, so everything works pretty much as expected with this. I'm particularly happy with this asset, and I hope it finds some of you use as well. It's particularly useful with UI work, but you could repurpose it for VR games, or even just tooltips or help screens in 3D games if you wanted something that's a bit more interactive and less boring than screen overlaid on top of the UI. You could just have holographic text aligning to the camera. Don't forget to check out my other asset called ACAT. The basic idea is that it will score a system based upon its potential performance. It does this using the memory, process clock, and any other information available to Unity about the system. And then using this score, it will set the quality on first run automatically. The script could also be used for your own custom quality scripts. In fact, it's encouraged you create one, but it will work out of the box. So I hope you enjoy your purchase of Easy Screen Line. This is Connor, off to do some work, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.